For many years, I carried in my wallet a tattered black and white photograph of my mother with her big, beautiful smile, head slightly tilted. She looks like a movie star. At the time of my mother's death, the family didn't have the money to put a tombstone on her grave. And before we could, the business office of the cemetery burned to the ground and all of the records of the burial sites were lost. There seemed to be no way for me to ever mark my mother's grave. I felt cheated. I felt cheated that she'd lived such a hard and short life because of Mississippi. I vowed to get out as soon as possible and to never go back. I decided to find the photographer, Mr. Anderson, who had taken the portrait. Over the telephone, I introduced myself and told him that he'd taken the only existing photograph of my deceased mother. He explained that he had retired over 40 years ago and that he'd thrown most of his work away. After our brief conversation, he agreed that I could come and visit to see what little work he had saved. A few weeks later, I was on a plane heading to Greenville, Mississippi, to Mr. Anderson's studio with only one purpose in mind. I was trying to get a master print of the old Anderson photograph of my mother. It was the first time I'd returned home since my mother's death over 15 years ago. As I pulled up to Mr. Anderson's house, the memories of my first visit to his studio came flooding back. I was five years old. As he invited me in, I saw that his studio had fallen into disrepair. I sat with Mr. Anderson, and our conversation grew beyond the tattered photograph. Still filled with pride in his work, he rather innocently showed me some photographs he'd taken many years ago of Greenville's African-American citizens. And in doing so, he introduced me to my own past. The photograph sparked my curiosity. I wanted to know more about these people, these survivors of segregation. I wanted to give these faces a voice. It was then that I decided to make a documentary about Mr. Anderson's Greenville. He agreed to sell me his camera and negatives on the condition that I share his work with the outside world. A group of concerned citizens asked Mr. Anderson to go to Belzoni, Mississippi to photograph the events surrounding the death of their friend and neighbor. A popular orator, advocate of voting rights, and leader of the local branch of the NAACP. Sing a song full of the faith the dark pain has taught us sing a song full of the hope that the present has taught us facing the rising sun of our
Through Mr. Anderson's photographs, I learned about a world that was completely foreign to me. Ironically, Mr. Anderson had recorded our version of the American dream. The photograph of my mother was the key to an inside world for me, and I had hoped that I would be the key to the outside world for Mr. Anderson.